<coughs> are we are we expecting more friends of yours to come? No. No? Is this all? Can we start? Yes. Okay, that's good. All right. Welcome, welcome again to week number what week is it? Four. Four. Mm. Four, but this is our second. Uh -huh. Yeah. And guess what? You have six <coughs> Monday holiday this semester. Um okay. Um so I know that you have done your root morphology practical and I've given some fundamental overview about the root during lab time. But there is no at all by definition is a complete approach that's just to help you with the samples that you were dealing with on on the day okay so now we're going to have a look at the proper um, morphology and a bit of anatomy lesson about the root one of the um, um, vegetative um, organs in the plant go on so this is actually a series of lecture dealing with vegetative organs. When we say vegetative organs, it, it excludes reproduction. Okay? Reproduction for plants, it involves specific organs that is not present throughout the entire time of the plant life cycle. It's not like animals. The reproductive part or organs are always there all the time. Okay, for plants it's a bit different. The organs only come about when the time is right. Okay, so why is that? Why did the reproductive organs only come when the time is right? It's evolutionarily speaking, because plants are immobile therefore they pretty much need pollinators okay agent it can be insects it can be wings it can be water to move the male gamete cells to meet with the female gamete cells okay and for this to happen there is a strong need for specialized structure to facilitate the pollination itself okay and it's quite costly for the plants actually to maintain this reproductive structure if it's not in use so better wait when the time comes when everything is favorable then only uh, the structure come out and do its reproduction function okay so root and then um, coming on we're going to deal with the stem and then eventually we i think we better do leaf have you done the leaf practical no you haven't right i think this week is is the leaf leaf because it's it's just a diverse subject we're going to do it two uh, sections for your practical okay go on <clears throat> okay um just a quick recap plan has organs and organs divide into two parts the root system and also the shoot system root is wherever under the ground okay so you have your roots uh, it can be your rootlets your root hairs and so on and that is what we're going to deal with others uh, will be in the series and uh, we're going to deal with them in the coming lectures okay Keep go on all right so we're going to have a look at the functions of the roots, the, the system of the root, and also the modification. <clears throat> okay, I hope you still remember the basic functions of the roots. What, what, what are those? Storage. Absorption of water and nutrients. And what else? And encourage not encourage encourage you want to 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 um want to not encourage okay encourage anchor you know anchor 
anchor. Okay, it claw in the ground, grab it so that it is stable to grow upright. Okay, what's the other function? Do you need a note? Um, please take your notes, okay? If you haven't got your notes. Kurang ni. Kawan tak dapat bagilah. Kau buat kerah. It's the rhizosphere thing. Roots actually the home for many microbes. And actually, this in turn can be very beneficial for the plants itself, right? Okay, um, so you're going to look um, roots when it comes to the location, actually, not necessarily in the underground, although the majority of the roots should be underground, especially when the plant has undergone modification. The roots can be above ground, okay? But in the regular sense, it's always underground because of the anchorage properties. Go on. Okay. Just a small short recap from your previous lecture. Remember, you learned about the divisions in plant. How many divisions? How many? Eleven. It starts with? That has been arranged according to evolution, actually. It starts with what? 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 The division number one. The kingdom is a plant. I'm talking about the division. Merkansha. Merkansha Faita. And then the second one? Anthocerophyta. The third one? Bryophyta. So the first three divisions, based on um, evolution, hasn't got the roots, but instead it has got this specialized, simple structure called rhizoid. Only in Filicophyta or Pteridophyta, the fourth division, only you get roots. The requirement for the organs to be called either rhizoid or root is rhizoid hasn't got any vascular system. It hasn't got any piping in it. No xylem, no phloem in it. Root has the vascular system, both the xylem and also the phloem. And this only starts from the fourth division, the pteridophyta, the fern division, and, and, and so on. Okay? All right. Please do not get confused between, because I put this because you learn about this structure, the rhizome. Rhizoid and rhizomes are not the same. Rhizoid are the primitive structure for roots. Rhizome is modified stems that grows horizontally on the ground. Okay, please do not get confused between the two terminologies. I hope you have started doing your glossary, okay? I uh, hope to, to, to have a look after this. Okay, go on. Okay, so just a bit more to go on the function of the roots. You know, it's for anchoring, it's for absorb, absorbing nutrients and water, for storage, plus another one, reproduction. Yes, for reproduction. Because the roots, even though after it has undergone modification, it is still a root. When you take it and bring it somewhere else, it can give rise to the whole plant. Okay? And it also serves properties in ecological function. Why people plant trees on the hill slope? To do what? To reduce what? Soil erosion, okay? To prevent landslide. People plant various plantation, vegetation on the hill slope, even just simple grass sometimes. If you go across the highway, some highway, they got the hill 
slope right. You can see there's so many, just a grass. No fancy plant, no flower, just grass. So this we call as cover crop. Cover crop. Um, what is it, Emily? Tanaman tutup bumi. Tutup bumi. Okay. It should, if it's the plants belongs to the bean family, the Fabaceae family, it serves two purposes. It covers the land so that it's not bare and naked, prevents soil erosion. But also, if it's bean, it will provide what? Nitrogen to the ground. Okay? So, bean family, the plants in the bean family, they have root nodules. Nodules mean the small sacs like the groundnuts. Yeah, these nodules attract bacteria to live in there, and these bacteria are called nitrogen fixation bacteria okay nitrogen even though it is a lot in our atmosphere anybody know what is the percentage of nitrogen in our atmosphere you learn from your science class right 70 something plus 70 i think 71 percent it's a lot however the nitrogen in our atmosphere is in the form of molecular nitrogen in the gaseous form so plants cannot utilize this kind of nitrogen. It has to be converted to bioavailable form before the plants can utilize the nitrogen. And this is the function of nitrogen fixation bacteria. It fixes the nitrogen, turn it from the um, unusable form, the molecular nitrogen, into the usable form that can be used by the plant. There are many types of usable nitrogen that can be used by the plants. Nitrates, nitrites, ammonium, and so on. Okay? It's, it's pretty much like um, the calcium, you know? Where, where can you get calcium? Milk. Milk, okay. Something solid. You know seashells? Yes. Has, has it got calcium in it? Yes. If you eat seashells, can you get the calcium? You know, you just take a seashell and just bite on it, crunch it. No. Why not? Because Everybody know you cannot get it. Because it's not bioavailable. Okay? It is still in this um, fixed form because originally it's to protect the seashell lives, okay? So the calcium is what we call as chelated. Chelated or clogged in. Chelated. Chelated. From the word claw, it is, it is bound to something. So it's not bioavailable. So the story is the same story for nitrogen as well, okay? No matter how much is it, if it's not bioavailable, you cannot utilize it, right? Okay, so um, so that serves for the ecological function. Go on. All right. So I think it's it's a bit interesting to see how actually you, the root develop. I, I'm not going to go into very far because actually there is a field of science that specifically deals with root development. It's under the discipline of plant development, developmental biology, it's called, okay? Um, medical students, they learn this, developmental biology. They learn how the fetus grow. They learn how the organs in our body grow. It's called organogenesis. Organogenesis. Stuart, organ is organ. Genesis is the birth of genesis, okay? So it can be genesis of anything. It can be soil genesis, the birth of the soil. The soil that you step on, the loose soil, the powdered soil that you're playing with, it was not always that way since the beginning, okay? It started as a chunk of rock that has undergone 
weathering process. You know weathering process? Yes. Luluhawa. Process luluhawa. So from the big chunk of rock, various weathering agents come about. Wind, acid, rains, earthquake, you stepping on it. It fragmentizes these boulders to become smaller and smaller pieces until you get your soil in the form that you are familiar with. Okay, so we, we look at how this root um, develop. Actually, um, one thing you need to bear in mind, root actually from the beginning of the germination, we start from the germination, it is not called a root. There is a word for that, it's called radical. Okay, so radical, you can think of it as the baby root, okay? Why? Why is it not called root right away? Because it has not performed all the root functions that you are familiar with, the storage, the anchoring, and so on. It's just there because for the sake of development. So we call it radical. Okay, go on. Okay, so this is, what seed is this? Actually, I want to ask, um, is this a monocot or dicot seed? Why? Yeah, it's got two dicot. Yeah, see, two. Um, I think this is the seed of a uh, soybean. Okay. Um, Glycine. Max. Soybean. What's the family of soybean? What? It's a bean. So, what's the family? You need to memorize this. Fabase, Fabase, depending. Do you pronounce Fabase or Fabase? Which one do you want to pronounce? Fabase. Why? Why you 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 choose European way? It's good if you go to Rome and visit Pope in Vatican City, you pronounce it, he's, he's going to be very impressed. Yeah. Oh, my child, my child. <laughs> you know, Pope? Um, I, went, I went to Vatican City many, many years back. Um, it's, it's very small. Serdang is bigger. But it's a country. <laughs> it's... Um, so the, the capital city, the capital for the country Italy is Rome, right, you know? So Vatican is in the middle of the Rome, and it's a country. So the size of it, mm, let me think, how big is it? You know Bukit Expo? Plus college 13, pretty much that's how big. <laughs> yeah, or maybe a bit more, plus uh, PKU. <laughs> so it's not, it's not, it's not that big. The most of the Vatican City is actually dedicated to the Vat Vatican Church Cathedral thing. That is the place where the Pope resides. Okay, if you're not familiar with the Pope, uh, for the for the Muslim student, a uh, Pope is, I'm thinking of a equivalent, mm. Ketua Mufti. Uh. You know we have a Mufti, right? Yeah. Um, I do not know whether our country has a mufti for all states. If we heard, if we were to have mufti for uh, all states, so that would be the equivalent for the Pope. Okay, it's very, very old. All right, okay, coming back to seeds. Okay, so the baby root is called radical. The baby shoot or the baby leaf, it's called plumule. Remember, when it is inside the seed, it is cotyledon. The leaf, cotyledon. The moment it is out, it's called plumule. Plumule from the words feathers, you know, feathers of the bird. Plumule. Feathers like feathers. You know, bird got, got this. Um, yeah, plumule. You know shuttlecock? Mm -hmm. If you take one, that's the plumule. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. So 
um, radical, plimil, and what is C? C, this, this is actually the seat jacket. Testa, seat coat. Seat coat. Seat coat or testa. Okay. And D actually is the food reserve for the seat. Um, it's called endosperm. So this is the food reserve. Do you have a food reserve in your body? What is it? Uh, fat. Fat. <laughs> fat is the compound in the, the organ dedicated for food reserve. Uh, stomach. stomach to... Yes, liver. Yeah. So liver contains what? Glycogen. glycogen. So when you are fasting, your energy actually comes from the glycogen first. You're not going to burn fat until your glycogen has all been used up. As simple as that. Okay. All right. Go on. Okay. So this is the close-up look at the radical when it has just emerged from the seed. So all these small things is called the root hairs. And then you get, can get all the way at the root tip. You see, the root tip hasn't got any root hairs. When you draw, please do not draw hairs at the tip. There is no hair because this is actually something different. Okay, I can tell you something interesting actually. Um, hairs in here. Do you have hairs? Yes. Where? Yes. <laughs> so many locations. <laughs> you, you, you see, um, hairs can uh, perform various functions, correct? So the hairs, it's coming about because of the gene action. So you have a gene in your, in your cell. When the gene is, is expressed, you have a specific organs coming out. Okay. There is one gene in our body that is actually homologous or similar to the gene that is responsible for root hairs here. Where do you think that gene is? It's in your body. Root has here. What's what's the function of root has here? It's just to absorb. Okay, it cannot do the encourage. It's just to absorb um um water and and simple ions and and compounds. Do you think you have root hairs in your body? Because the gene is for micro hairs. Actually, the name of the gene is micro hair gene. Micro hair gene. When it is expressed in plants, you get root hairs in the root. When it is expressed in you, where do you get it? Small intestine. Small intestine. That's, that's cilia. That's actually not hair. That's actually the uh, tissue, the cell. Epithelial tissue. This is epithelial tissue, actually. It's not really hair. It looks like hair. But it's not hair. It's actually in your ears. Your ears got hair, right? Yeah. Inside of it. However, the micro hairs in your hair, is it responsible to absorb water? No. Never what? It's, it's for hearing, auditory. Auditory function. So in your ears, these hairs in your ears, when they move due to the vibration of sound wave, it will create electrical signals. And these electrical signals will be sent to your brain and then your brain will interpret this is Lagu Hari Raya. And so on. Okay? So, imagine that. Similar genes making similar structure but different function. In your ear, it's for the hearing. In the plants, it's to absorb water. All right. So nature is actually very, very interesting. If you learn more and more about it. Okay. Go on. Okay. So this is right at the tip of the root. The thing that you need to understand here is there are zones in the, the tip of the root. This is the end of it. The root cap, the one that I say do not draw any 
test. So this is called the root cap. However, remember one thing, this is not the youngest part of the root just because it's, it's at the end, okay? The youngest part is actually around here. This part, the root hair here, it is actually um, heavily surrounded what, be, with this thing, mucy gel. You see, your root, is it soft or hard? Then, if it's very soft, do you think it's easy or difficult for it to move in the soil? Why? Soil, is it soft or hard? Hard. Your root, is it soft or hard? So how come your soft root can maneuver the rocks and the soil, break everything to go deeper and deeper? It's due to this thing, mucy gel. It provides lubricant to the root so that it can glide through the soil particles so that it doesn't hurt itself. Lubricant, okay? Do you have lubricant in you? It's in your nose, you know, your throat, right? That's a lubricant. If you have, hasn't got any lubricant in your throat, you're going to cough all day long, non-stop. Okay? All right. So we have the meristematic zone. This is the zone which is the youngest. And then we have the elongation zone, the zone that these cells, these cells here at the beginning, it hasn't got any destiny yet. The moment it has decided to become the root cells, it will start to elongate. Okay? And then when it goes further up, you will reach with the maturation zone. Okay. Only in this maturation zone, you will start to have this root hairs. And remember, root hairs is, is actually the outgrowth of epidermal cell. You have epidermal cell here as well, but it is not modified. Epidermal cell, in the maturation zone, it modifies itself, becomes the root hairs. can be very, very long. Okay, yeah, and then in the middle here, you have the structure, we will have a look at in a bit. <coughs> quiescent means sleeping, dormant, very silent, quiescent, okay, um, yeah, oh, don't worry about the cast appearance trick, all right, okay, go on, okay, I think during the lab, I've shown you about this concept, right? You have the primary root, your tap root, and then when it, it gives rise to, um, to the branching, you call it the primary root, the secondary root, okay? This primary root is actually originally from the radical that you saw earlier. It gets bigger and bigger, and over the time, you don't call it radical anymore. It is now the primary root. And the moment primary root start on branching out, you will get secondary root and so on, right? If it's three times branching, you call it what? Tertiary. What time? <laughs> Quaternary. Quarter. Four. Okay. Go on. Okay. Um, this is something that you have to deal with when I'm not around during the anatomy lab. Okay. But I, I'll tell you. So during your anatomy lab, you're going to be provided with some cross-section of various roots from different plant species. And this will be divided into either monocot root and also the dicot root. Monocot root like the grass root, okay? Dicot root like the, the bean that you saw just now. You can see that the arrangement of um, xylem is rather different between the two. Although these two still share similar structure, 
there is still something different between them two, okay? So you can see um, the arrangement of phloem here and compare with the arrangement of phloem here. They are different. So that's, that's how scientists know because regardless of the plant species, the moment scientists have the cross-section of root, they'll just use the common diagram, a standard diagram like this, to identify whether the plant is from the monocot group or the dicot group. Okay. Um, yeah, I put some glossary for you. Um, see, I'm very nice. Actually, it should be your homework, right? Protoxylum and metaxylum. <clears throat> Pro means at the beginning, meta when it has advanced in age. Okay, before it, you have your final xylem. Remember, okay, xylem, dead tissue. Xylem is dead, phloem is living. Remember that. Xylem, the function is to transport water. Water, just water. It doesn't, ha it doesn't require lots of energy to do it. Okay, just a simple cohesion and addition along the, the xylem tubing. But when it comes to, to transport sugar, many times it has to go against the concentration gradient. And to do this, the cells require energy. And energy can only be provided by living cells. That is why phloem contains living cells. Okay? Why again? To facilitate the transport. Okay? Remember, remember from, from last lecture, you see one of the tallest tree in the world. What is it called? You still remember the name? Sequoia, yeah. It's so far away, okay, to reach from one place to another place. Even if you run, what is the world record for the fastest man running 100 meter? Uh, <laughs> That's the name of the guy. <laughs> I think it's, it's like 8.9 seconds. <sighs> Still, it is not one second, okay? And the, the plant, Remember, the plant hasn't got any heart. It circulate that from one place to another without any pumping organ. Do you have pumping organ? Yes. What is it? Yeah. Does it does it use a lot of energy? Yes. Yeah. Are you taller or plant taller? Plant. Yeah. So it's a miracle. Plant can accomplish all this transport going up, going down, going sideways without any pump at all. It's a miracle, okay? So the way plant achieve this is the combination of two specialized tubing, xylem and phloem, okay? It divides the job. Xylem, you deal with water. Phloem will deal with big molecule, charged molecule, heavy molecule, sugar, amino acid, and so on, right? Okay, go on. Okay, so um, again, just just to um, revise. So, roots absorb nutrients and also another function. Produce hormones. Do you have hormones? Yes. What hormones do you have? Yes. You have progesterone. When? <laughs> Are you sure you have progesterone? Do you do you have estrogen? Do you have estrogen? <laughs> do you have estrogen? Did you did you have you learned about hormones before? Okay. Um so for girls, the um we call it the um endocrine, endocrine system, pituitary gland so on, it's a bit more complicated than guys. Okay, because uh for, for girls uh they they have to 
undergo the, the reproductive cycle. For the guys, why is it not very complicated? Why? Why is it not complicated with you? No, for girls, until you hit menopause, your heart is protected. That's why hardly you hear any women die from heart attack. Uh, a reason why the lifespan for women is higher than men. Women, they have estrogen to protect their heart and various function in the body. Okay, men do not have that. Okay, so what men have? <laughs> Actually, you cannot uh, have estrogen a lot. If you have estrogen a lot, you will start to have all female characteristics. Okay, um, and women as well. You can have lots of that. In it, don't make mistake. Okay, in female, you also have a bit of male hormones, testosterone, but it is under control. Okay, so there is a balance between the two. Okay, so for plants. All these hormones, they are produced in one place. However, it is being used for the rest of the plant structure. It is not like your, your, um, your hormone. Specific hormone in humans is being produced by specific glands. You know glands? Um, Kalenja. Kalenja. Uh, Okay, Kalenja. Okay. These hormones can be produced in various locations inside the plants. Roots can produce these hormones. Leaf can also produce these hormones. Okay. For example, your growth hormone. What glands produce your growth hormone? Do you have glands? Okay. What glands that produce your growth hormone? Pituitary glands. Pituitary gland. Okay. So pituitary gland always produce the growth hormone. You are not going to see your ovary produce growth hormone. It's just not, it's just not the way it works. Okay. If, if that is the case, you'll be in trouble. Right? So it's not like plant. Okay. Plant have hormones being produced by various cells in various locations. So for human, it's very specific. And then it will be transported and circulated by our circulation system. All right? Okay, go on. Okay. Two major root system. The fibrous root system and also the root. I think you are very familiar with this, right? Okay. So fibrous roots. Um, there is no apparent or obvious middle root, the, the primary root. Everything kind of coming, branching out from a, from 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 this uh, base here, okay. So mostly plants that don't really grow very tall, herbaceous plant that don't grow very tall, okay. Because one of the function of the tap root is for the strong anchorage, like when you are building um, a tall tower, they're going to. Um, Hammer in, what's the word? Um, plank, yeah, plank plus piling. So this is pretty much equivalent to tap root. Okay, so fibrous root, herbaceous plant, annual plant. They don't live for very long. When they flower, they're going to die. So they need to absorb nutrient and water as much as possible in a short period of time. That's why the roots kind of occupy the much space that it can. All right, go on. And they got the root tablet system. So you're familiar with this. And pay attention. You can get the secondary and also the tertiary root um, degree. Okay, go on. Okay, so gymnosperm and dicots associated with the taproot system, while the monocots have the fibrous root system. There are some exceptions, actually, but 
we we follow the general rule here okay at least for the uh, agricultural crops okay roots of ferns and lycophytes are usually adventitious root that originates from the stem okay whenever the roots do not originally come from the radical remember radical is the origin point for all roots whenever the roots coming out from location other than the radical we call it adventitious root akar luar biasa akar biasa datang daripada radical dia datang from any place other than the radical okay okay go on okay now we'll look at the root modification okay so we have dealt with the root function root structure and so on hmm did i put this no speed <coughs> um i actually these notes that you have i have modified it quite a bit i i just add a few things because um your exam will be standardized with other five groups okay so um so dr fidaus he's the coordinator for the course so i kind of use his notes but but of course um i have added a lot of things to facilitate your understanding because um this is your first time you see this kind of thing faculty of agriculture students see this in all subjects pretty much okay all right so let's see the root modification what's that all about all right to prevent confusion i strongly advise you to understand this diagram okay root modification number one you need to understand there are two routes or two paths for modification you need to understand is it deal with the tap root or is it dealing with the adventitious root that's that needs to be clear first okay so when you go to one side first the tap root under the tap root modification it can be for the reason of storage and also breathing okay and under the adventitious root also can be storage okay mechanical support and also the vital function the vital function is actually this as well should go here okay right so we're going to have a look uh, in each of these um, if you have your glossary i strongly advise you to get ready with that it's because you're going to learn many many weird words yeah okay go so let's see the tap root modifications okay <laughs> meaning that the radical that you saw just now it gets bigger and then it modify itself to serve different functions okay when it has modified itself please remember it doesn't mean that it is not doing the root basic functions anymore. It is still absorbing nutrient. It is still for anchorage, but now add added function, the storage. Okay. So there are a few, few forms. There is a few C form. Few C form. I put a little definition up there for you. It means in the shape of spindle. Spindle. Okay. You know spindle? <laughs> What's this? Yes, correct. Um, uh, bobbin. I, 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 at one point, I know why is it in Malay? Do, uh, do you sew? Sewing? Do you put. Kuachi? 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 Sekuchi. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sekuchi. Ah, Bobbin. So, um, the, uh, somebody corrected me a few months ago about, about this because I forgot the, the name. Uh, the, 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 the guys look so blur. What is that? What is that? <laughs> Do you know that? Have you ever dealt with sewing machine? confident <laughs> so it, it looks like the this this thing is spindle spindle 
Okay. So um, the good example for this is radish. So usually the shape is like this for the fusiform. Y in the middle, tapering at the end, like this. So fusiform. And then you have conical. Conical. For example, the good example is carrot. So conical, it looks like cone. There is a base. And then you got your mountain. Conical. Carrot, you need to turn it. So you carry it like, like this. You did draw your carrot, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, then um, Numatophore. Mm, this is uh, special for the mangrove tree. Baka. 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 <laughs> what is the Latin name for Coco mangrove? Coco bakau. Mangrove tree. You, you might be surprised because the name is there. I don't know why the name is like this. Do you know Avicenia? Yes. For some reason, it's the, it's the same name. I do not know if um, Avicenia, if Ducina working with mangrove before. But yeah, that's, that's how they put the name. Sometimes Latin is just like that. Um, there, there is one, 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 one weird uh, name, example. Um, do you know this? Um, What's this? What's this? Harry Potter? It's a bird. It's a mythological bird. Mythological bird. But um, in your Harry Potter, this is the Harry Potter bird. But there is another kind of phoenix, which is the name of a genus. Genus of what plant? Date. Look it up. Scientific name for the date palm, the date tree. Look it up. Is it true or not? Yes. See? Phoenix. Yeah. So, um, probably it's the same story for the Bakau tree. Okay? Maybe Avis in a never never work with uh, the tree people have weird reasoning okay All right and so numatophor is the rhizophora rhizophora is the 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 science name for this um bakau and this is numatophor numat 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 is means the gas air sex kantong gas force P H O R E S four means bearing. Force um, to bear. Not the teddy bear. No, 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 no. That's noun. Bear. Um, to withhold. Memegang. Me, me, menanggung. To bear. You you know right. Some sometimes words in English it change the meaning based on the part of speech. If it is noun, if it's noun, it is animal. If it is verb, it is action. Yeah, the the, the meaning changes as the this this thing noun verb kata nama kata kerja apa benda semua tu. Yeah, so, you did you learn that? Okay, so in English it depends on are you referring to the noun or verb. Right. Okay. Then we have the nappy form. Nappy form. I'm not quite sure. I I just know it's from the word napus. Napus. Napus is the Latin word for turnip. Um, turnip. What is it, Emily? Um, top. I put I put another example. Top here. It has two meanings depending on depending on the part of speech. If it's a noun, the top is the saying. 
If it's an adjective, it is the location. Top, you know, at the top of the wall. Yeah. So it depends on the part of speech. Okay. So napus actually is the form of top. Okay. I have a top. That's, that's another another thing actually. Top ni, now ni, top ni. It's the uh, outer shirt. <laughs> you know, you if you if you have like the, I think guys always use use this uh, tank top. Tak tahu lah pasal dia apa. Baju yang tak ada lengan tu. Kind of like singlet. Kind of like singlet. Um, but not not very breezy. <laughs> Singlet is meant to be very breezy. Tank top is mm, tight and stuff. The bodybuilder use that. Uh, all right. Okay. All right. Okay. Then you have the nodulated. Okay. Nodulated. Uh, think of peanuts nodules. Okay. And then in the form of tuberous. Okay. Tuberous simply means swell. Okay, it it does it. It's it's kind of in between the conical and also the fusiform. So somewhere in be between here is tuber tuberous. It just means swell. Because sometimes in one plant, when when you pull it out of the ground, you can have a number of shapes. And all of these shape collectively you call tuberous. To be more specific, tuberous what? Conical tuberous, fusiform tuberous. Okay, and the example here is mirabilis. Um, I, 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 I'm not sure whether our country. I think we have it, uh, but not very many. Mirabilis is the four o'clock plant. The plant will only bloom four o'clock and beyond. Uh, four o'clock plant. This mirabilis. Okay, all right, and all of this has been modified from the tap root. Do not forget this tap root here. I got my rota. Why I'm not using it? Okay, modified to become all of this. Okay, just one one um uh, more, uh note. The tap root can give rise. This nomatophore can come from primary root and also it can come from the adventitious root okay so you're going to see that this pneumatophore present in tap root modification and also the adventitious root modification okay all right go on all right so now we deal with the adventitious roots okay adventitious root look at the definition arise from an organ other than the root anywhere it can be from the stem, it can be from the branch, the twig, the, the base, anything. As long as it's not coming from the radical, it is adventitious root. What is it, Emily? Atar luar biasa. Atar luar biasa. Okay, okay, go on. Okay, there are a number of adventitious roots uh, that's meant for um, storage. We got the tuberous, tuberous root, see? Tuberous, you, you see tuberous again? Just now you, you saw tuberous, right? But that is tuberous from the tap root. When the modification happening to other than the tap root, you can get tuberous as well. Okay? Fasciculator, monolithic, okay, go on. Let's, let's see. Okay, tuberous root. Um, modification of adventitious root. They are fleshy, do not have any particular shape. See? No particular shape. They just kind of in between other shapes, all right? But in essence, they swell, all right? All right, okay? So, and these adventitious root, they can swell up when the time comes because, for example, the plant needs to be ready for the long winter, for example. So they just keep on storing the food, all right? Okay, um, go on. Oh, sorry. Uh, I forgot to put the example. What example? Are you sure? You just dealt with potato. Potato and under which practical session? 
root or stem. That's why I asked you to bring that. Damn. Yeah. Potato. It's a stem modification. So this is more into the um, could 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 it? You know, could it? No. no. <laughs> Sweet potato. You have to okay. Um, I'll just uh, yes. True, betul. Um, ada ada banyak warna. You have to okay. Potato, and you have sweet potato. They kind of look similar, but there are differences actually. One color, pretty much. It's either yellow, brown, or something in between. Sweet potato can be many color. What? What color? Orange. Purple. Um, yes, red. Yeah. yeah. Can be very colorful. Why? They are colored. There's a pigment in here. Why green? Why, why, why leaf is green? Chlorophyll. So, chlorophyll, what, what, what's the pigment in here? Anthocyanin. Okay. Anthocyanin. All right. Um, for the orange one, this is carotin. Carotin. From the word carrot. Carrot. Okay. Potato, it's um, the tomato family. Where is it? What's the name of the tomato family? So. Solaris. Solaris is your petrolization. <laughs> Solanesi. Solanesi. Sweet potato. The family is the morning glory family. You know morning glory? E, oh sorry, Epo, Epo mia C. Oh, you get the, the the. So two different family, okay? Potato, Solanaceae, the tomato family. The sweet potato, the morning glory. Anybody do not know what morning glory is? Never see morning glory. Bunga kangkong. You know kangkong? Kangkong is morning glory. Ipomia reptans or Ipomia aquatica if you have uh, kangkong air. Right? Yeah. So, um, get it correct because they look they look similar but they are of different organs and type not. Now, at least you know. So, between the two, which one is healthier? Which one is healthier for you to consume? Sweet. For your diet? Sweet. Sweet. Potato or sweet potato? Sweet potato. Why? Uh, Why? Why sweet potato is healthier? Um, you know, in our, the whole planet, in our world, there are a number of places that is called as the, I'll just, just hold up this, okay? It's called the blue zones. Blue zones, because it is the population is concentrated with centenarian. You know centenarian? The, the population in here, many people are beyond the age of 100. It's not, it's not happening randomly, okay? Only in certain parts of the world. And this region is called the Blue Zones region. Okay. One of the region and probably one of the longest average, it's where? There are a number. There, there, there are um, in, in, the, in the United States. In the USA, it's called Loma Linda. In, in Italy, we got Italy as well. Italy is called Sardinia. So, there is one in Japan as well. Guess where? The only place in Japan that do not get snow. It's in the south. Where? Okinawa. 
guess what? When they do the study for many, many years, not only one year study, for long time of study, not these people, not only that they are 100 years, they have both. They have long lifespan and also health span. They are healthy, over 100 years old people. Still go to work, still socializing, still not demented. Sound mind, okay? 100 years old, if, if the guy was in Malaysia, what happened? <laughs> I, I call, merangkap macam bewak lah. Right. No, you, 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 you don't have to wait until 100 years old. 80 years old is enough. Yes. Right. So people in Okinawa, 100 years old, they are still actively participating in various forms of activities. They study a lot of things. One of the things that they notice is um, these people, they don't eat a lot of meat and they don't eat a lot of rice as well, but they eat this. Don't be fooled by the word sweet. This thing is full of nutrient. Look at this, all this color. This color, when it gets in your body, some, something amazing happens. So the more color, the more colorful foods, natural food that you eat, orange, blue, violet, red, green, the more healthier your body will be because each of the color will do something specific, amazing to your body. Okay? That's why diversify your diet. All right? Okay. So, eat sweet potato to join this um, blue zone. <laughs> right? What's the life expectancy for our country? I think it's about 76, 77. Yeah, and these people, they, um, the whole Japan, the whole Japan is about 90, almost 90. See, 12 years difference. Many things can be done in 12 years. Right, right, okay, right, go on. I'm telling you the story because plants, is, plants are present everywhere on the planet. And these people, they are healthy because they are consuming the right kind of plants. Okay, so... Understand the things that get into your diet. You will not only have a long lifespan, but a long health span. Okay? I do not know what health span in Malay. L long life is jangka hayat panjang. Jangka kesihatan yang panjang. Okay. Monoliform. All right? Monoliform, um, the, the roots, the adventitious root, the swelling, actually, it comes from the words um, necklace. Oh, yeah, Monila. Necklace. 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 It's French, I think. I think it's French. Monila. So, it regularly has this swelling, like beads. So, this we call as monoliform. Mono means it's regular. Okay? Form is the shape. One example is, I think maybe... Maybe your moms like to plant this. Pop, pop. It's not okay. It's 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 the plant that uh, blooms. Pukus pulu. Oh. Rose Japan. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So it got many colors, right? Yeah. If you pull it out, the root actually has this monoliform shape. Yeah. Don't pull out when you go back to home. <laughs> I'm just that. But if you need to reporting the plant, you can take the chance to see the root instead of monoliform. All right. Okay. Go on. Okay. Annulated root. Um, so, annu, annulus is from the Greek word. It means ring. Ring. Um, so, it's in the form of rings, this modification. Okay. One example here is this hypercat um, root. Okay. I put it here. Just in case, if you go to India, um, this thing is quite common. They, they, they use this in Ayurvedic medicine. Okay? Huh? If you go to India, if you are having cough and everything, it's not like they sell Hurix or Brekol. Or Ubat Batu, Chak Ibu Anak. They, 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 they have their Ayurvedic thing. One of the Ayurvedic thing is they use from this plant, Ipercat. Okay? 
So this thing uh, can promote expectorant. Um, expectorant. Expectorant. It promotes the ex expulsion, expel of mucus in your lung. Okay. Um, so in our country, the drugs for this is guasin, I think. Guasin. So this plant, um, if you eat it, you're going to cough a lot to the point it works a little too well. You're going to cough out everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So be careful, okay? Um, um, the local people like to promote this so much. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. But but now you can tell the story to the lo to, to the to the to the local uh, farmers. Okay. Oh, I know this farm. Annulated. All right. Oh, he's got the name here from Latin. Annulus. Annulus. See, aku baik kan? Cari masuk bagi kau. All right. Okay. Uh, go on. I scared it. Oh, yeah. 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 Fisherman train tertinggal. Apa itu? Um, <clears throat> so we, we, we are, we are still, um, under what modification? What kind of fruit? Adventitious root mod modification. So the next example is called the fasciculated root. Fasciculate, it means, simply means in a bunch. Ber, berjamba, bergugus. Okay. Small slender bundle. Okay, and a good example for this is the root of dahlia. I, I don't think we have dahlia in our country, sangat. Uh, oh, we have, okay. So you come in bundle? I, I, I have, I have uh, somebody I know uh, named dahlia. Yeah, but she's 80 years old. <laughs> Orang putih. Oh. Dahlia. Dahlia Steven. Yeah. What, what's the family of Dahlia? You should know this. The shape of the Dahlia is in the star. So, Esther. Esther what? what what's the full name for the family? Esterase or Esterase, it's the the second largest flowering family. Number one is orchid. Okay, it's the largest one. The the, the second largest member, uh, Esterase. The third one is Poaceae. Okay. Yeah. So you can see the roots. They come in bunch like this. Okay. This is not ubi kayu. Jangan makan. Uh, guess what? You can take one root here and then plant somewhere. So your root now has additional function for reproduction, right? Dahlia is very beautiful. Um, I have, uh, I have, I have uh, album well, full of dahlia flowers. Um, if you go to northern hemisphere, the four season countries in northern hemisphere. Um, 
Dahlia season is actually now this week. So this week is the week it, it blooms to the fullest. Yeah. So so many, so many. Some some dahlias that I encountered with actually smells like chocolate. Yeah. Yeah. Choco, choco dahlia. Yeah. So you don't you don't don't feel surprised people turn this into cookies and biscuits. Because in nature there is dahlia of various flavors. Yeah. S smell smell citrusy you know citrusy smell like um lime lemon orange smells like chocolate yeah there, 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 there. even though you have a plant you associate it with familiar taste or flavor sometimes exception can happen right like the modification that you're learning now there are um, bananas that taste like vanilla have you tasted that yeah, I think they have it in, in UPM, but it's just not flowering and fruiting very well. Um, I tell you what, um, if you uh, the the banana plants in Bukit Expo, the fruit kind of look reddish. Fruit banana, what color? Yeah, this this guy is a bit reddish. Yeah, and you, you when you eat it, it actually tastes like vanilla. Yeah, All right. Okay, go on. What else? Nodulus root. Okay, nodulus means um, knob, tombol, tombol, and the difference is it doesn't happen if if you have uh, your whole adventitious root. It doesn't happen at 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 the middle of your adventitious root. It always happen at the end. This is the end of it. So this is this is how you differentiate um, nodulus root with other form of roots like the fasciculated monoliform, because other advantage other root modification they can happen more and more and more. Like this is what form is this? Monoliform. You see, and they can go on until. Until 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 whatever length it wants, but for the nodulus, it's pretty much this is the end. Yeah, and one good example is what plant is this? Turmeric. Last week, what plant you dealt with? But it's rhizome. Ginger. Okay, so again, different organ. That is stem. And stem modification for that we call rhizome. Now, this is not stem. This is actually root. It's at the end of the adventitious root. We call nodulus. Curcuma longa. What's the family of kunye? What's the family? Is the same family as the um, ginger? It start with what? Zin, zebra, ra, se, zin, zebra. Okay. All right. Uh, next. All right. Now, um, adventitious root modification dealing with support just now advantageous root dealing with storage a number of forms now dealing with um support have have you drawn it before yes. what did you draw during your root practical and then so what root pandan got Prop root or stilt root? No, I put this because I can see some of you put prop roots, some of you call uh, stilt root. There is a difference, okay? So prop root, it's actually to support uh, branching, uh, meaning that it can come up from like this. There's a Malay word for that. Um, I'm recalling 20 years ago lesson. Menopang. You know? 
you know, uh, I think the root word for that is topang. You know topang? You know crutches? Nobody knows crutches. Oh, we should have brought that thing. <laughs> because I got a pair of crutches do not know uh, belongs to who. Crutches. Tongkat. Um, yeah, under uh, underarm cane. You guys, quite uh, that, accident. That is your uh, close friend. Yeah, you, you use that to go er er everywhere. So, dear... Um, it's actually to support. So you have your tree here. Your tree has branching, right? Left and right. So suddenly, from the branch, since adventitious root can come out from anywhere, you have your root like here. Actually, it starts with like a thousand root. You know, the root that doesn't go ha, 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 along the way, along the jungle. <laughs> yeah. So to support this branching, this is crop. Yeah, but for your um, corn, it's right at the base here. So whenever it's at the base, we call it stilt. There is a word, but, but I do not know um, whether it's right or not. Maybe, maybe, maybe people kind of scam me. It's called... <laughs> Ak akar chungit. Is that, is that a word? I don't. I don't even know how to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure whether that's the, the, the right word. You know, ter ter chungit ter ter ah ah yeah uh, 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 <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, tilt tilt. You tilt it. You tilt it. Yeah. Eh, kau tadi, tadi kan kau ada accident dengan ni. Motor-motor kau tu, tiba-tiba kau stop, lepas tu dia pergi macam tu. Ah, ingat, eh? Ah, kau, kau buat stun dengan dia. Ah, sebab kau buat wheelie tu dah macam, oh, that's too easy. Ah, but you speed, you speed your bike and then kau break, kan dia tercut macam tu. Ah, tercunggit lah tu. Is that a word? I don't know. So, still. Dia, 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 dia tahan, dia tahan uh, the erect uh, structure from from um, uh, fall. Okay, so prop roots of banyan, banyan is a uh, pokok ara, pokok ara, um, ficus, ficus, and you have this is the state root. So it is very common in monocot. Okay. Prop root is more common for the dicot. Okay. State root is more common for the dicot. Okay. For the sugar cane, your, the corn that you drew. Yeah. All still root. Okay. All right. Oh, yeah. I'll put a drawing here. Actually, this is from a YouTube video. Somebody drew this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Yeah. And then you have climbing root. You see, this root is still serve function to absorb water and nutrient. It just so happened that it's, it's got extra claws and glues. You see, some people kind of grow plants on the wall of the house, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. belong to this. Yeah. So the good example for this is what? Yeah. So what what is it in English? Bitter leaf. Bitter leaf. Pinang. Beetle nut, right? Okay, so you got your sirih. Uh, what else? Um, pepper. No pepper. 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 Um, piper nigrum. Nigrum means black. So black is hitam. Okay. So some roots that under this category, they are very fine so that they can go into the nooks and crevices of the rock or building and they kind of stay in there. Or they have got special glue. Okay. You don't see any cracks on the wall, but the root kind of sticking to the wall. It's got glue. 
Okay. Right. Go on. Okay. And this is another uh, route. Uh, you have to go to the forest to see this. Buttress route. Uh, the Malay for this is Akabane. Akabane. This thing, at one point, I was in the jungle. It's so massive. It's, it, it's like 10 meters away. Yep. Yeah, and that is what you see on the ground. Under the ground, that's even more massive. Yeah, so um, because uh, tropical trees, uh, especially at a bit higher elevation, the, the soil can be very moist and soft. If it hasn't got this kind of buttress root, it's going to collapse easily. Th this, tree no, this tree, no kidding, it's so, so big and so heavy. Yeah, not to mention the jumping monkey on top. Right. And then you come along. <laughs> shake it. Yeah, see? So it's wet and unstable. Pidaw dah tulis rupanya. Have you seen this before? Yes. Yeah. People always associate this with pokok hantu. Yeah. Alright. Root buttress, okay? Okay, go on. Aerial root. Okay, this is for two purpose. Um, actually, it's for support and also to get air and water nutrients okay so this as under the category of epiphytic root and the good example you dealt with this before the orchids go on uh, remember your development did you draw like this can you see that what does it say it should be the bundle something So, the word I mentioned during the um, practical, Villamon, this is the main, the meaning, wrap. Okay. Cover, wrap. Right? So, look at the root. It's for the support and also to absorb the nutrients from the surrounding and this is special for especially for the epiphytic plants like orchid orchids not a local plant okay actually orchid from the jungle people brought the orchids out and then domesticate so that you can enjoy and buy All right so orchid that you go to the shop and buy they are actually not from seeds they are actually from the lab tissue culture because for orchid, uh, this is sun, a kind of fun fact. Orchid seed is the smallest seed in the world. Orchid. You know seed? There is a smallest and biggest. Smallest. Orchid. Biggest. Um. Coco Dimmer. I think we have it, but not so many. This this plant, Coco Dimmer, is so big. The, the minimum weight of each seed is about seven kilogram. It's like a coconut. Okay. Um, the the nickname for this is double coconut. Or people call it um, the butt coconut. Yes, betul. Some people I heard call kelapa bontot because it has got two. Ah, you can imagine the rest. It's so big. Okay. Right. Okay, go on. And then we got foliar roots. Okay. You're very familiar with this, you know. You learn your science. You can take the leaf, the red, the leaf. Red, yeah, Poco setawa. And the science name for it is Kalancho. Kalancho. Anybody never saw setawa before? Setawa, okay, because Star Wars. Right, okay, go on. Okay, this is sucking root or 
there's another name for it. Parasitic roots. Okay. Please correct your understanding, okay? Not all plant species photosynthesize. Oh. About 5% something of the whole plant species on the earth, they do not photosynthesize. They are parasitic. Okay? The one example is this thing, daughter. This this yellow thing, not this thing. This is this is this is the host. Yeah. The daughter and then the mistletoe. We don't have we don't really have this um, in our country. Uh, our country, I forgot to put the example here. Poco de Dalu. Poco de Dalu. Buka semalu. De Dalu. De Dalu. Sorry, I should have put the, the image. I forgot. De Dalu. So this is a parasitic. Um, um, that's kind of epiphytic. Do it, do it, do. Okay, because you can see the roots actually on the surface. It never gets into the tree. You know, Poco de Dalu? Is it on the surface or is it in, in, into the tree? The surface, right? So it only use that as home. Okay? So that it can climb up and then to get all the water, nutrient, and sunlight. Right? So um, parasitic, they are not photosynthesizing. Um, why? Can you call it plants? Well, the definition of plants actually does not include to do photosynthesis. Okay? So, it still has the cell wall and everything. The genes, still the genes of the plant, but they just don't photosynthesize. Okay? Result of. Maybe if you watch the, the Western movie, you, you maybe you're familiar with this plant. Ever saw that before? Result of? This is the thing. If you if you if you deal with 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 Western Western people, um, when they they are celebrating New Year, um, it's a tradition. They will kiss wh whoever they want to kiss, and it needs to be under this mistletoe. It's kind of a good luck. Whoever you kiss will be um, your whatever you want to be. <laughs> nothing Oh. oh. So I have told you something that I should, should not have told. <laughs> Mizoto. It's a good luck. It's a good luck. In, in culture, not our culture. Don't kiss your friend. <laughs> kiss your hand. Kiss your hand. Right? Okay. So, and the structure, the root, the root that gets into the plant to absorb nutrients, especially we call hosteria. Hosteria. This is plural, okay? The singular is hosterium. Right. Okay, go on. Okay. And another type of root, yo, this is interesting. This root can photosynthesize. Just now, cannot photosynthesize at all. This root is actually green. Some plants, not very many plants, they can actually photosynthesize the root. The roots undergo modification and it photosynthesizes. It's still absorbed, do the anchorage and everything, but it just wants to photosynthesize. And we have this in our country. Um, uh, so, this is your tree. Ling, not. Tak tahu lah, Cina tu panggil Ling. Aku panggil Ling lah. Or the, 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 the English, they call it caltrop, water caltrop. Um, water chestnut. Kacang sengkuang, sengkuang air. Ah, orang kata awak ni uh, kacang kerbau. There's so many common names for this. Yeah, yeah. So uh, if you go to the market, this actually, if you if you look at the higher resolution, this looks scary actually. Look like the head of a buffalo. Okay, nothing to do with the story. This thing got cursed and then turned into buffalo. <laughs> no, no. So, um, if you go to the swamp area, and uh, you, you can find this a lot, all right? And, and um, uh, it's, it's quite easy to, to be found in the market. I think this thing got seasons. It's got seasons, all right? And the name is Trapa, I think. Yes, Trapa. Trapa, all right? Okay, go on. No matter for, uh, didn't we see this earlier? No matter for under the tap root? You see, you see, again, under the adventitious root because 
the adventitious root can also stick out from the ground, forming these knuckles to be called pneumatophore. What is the function of pneumatophore? Breathing. Breathing. This ground, what is it? Yes, mud. Mud. Um, it's brackish. You know brackish? Uh, brackish. Payau. Bukan paya. Paya, swamp. Paya is swamp. Shrek's home. Um, this is paya. Paya. I'm talking about paya. The taste. You know paya taste? Yeah. Taste macam mana? Paya. It's, it's, it's kind of salty but ada benda lain dalam tu. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, like heavy, heavy taste. You 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 feel like there's something else in the water. But the water looks clear. But it's, it's something. Yeah. Um, the good example for this actually is Zam Zam. Ah, Zam Zam, you got that that taste right. Yeah. That 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 um, uh, special taste of Zam Zam water. Um, you don't know Zam Zam water? Non Muslim? It's a holy water. Holy water, not holy because we pray to the water. Uh, it's from the land in Arabs, Arab Saudi Arabia, uh, Mecca, in Mecca. So there is a well that has been producing this water since thousands of years ago more than 2000 years ago and it hasn't stopped until now so that's why it's holy for, for the muslim okay anybody never drank um, zam zam water i i see this all the time okay people take for granted when drinking zam zam water for just minum saja don't please don't do that whenever you get the chance to drink zam zam water say a prayer say, whatever do are I want to be beautiful, please drink it. Seriously. You don't have to pray to Raka first or do anything. No. Upon drinking the water, make a dua. Whatever you want. I want to be handsome, um, big tummy no more. I, I don't know. You, you're young, materialistic so much, right? <laughs> <laughs> whatever that you want worldly desire or for your hereafter go for it you can never even make um, prayer for your friends right yeah so please when you have the chance to drink it say the prayer all right okay go on yeah so just just a picture of the number of four um yes um another one so pneumatophore, um, actually, when it's sticking out, it's the mangrove, it can have the second, the prop root. Okay? So one plant, the mangrove, the Avicinia, besides pneumatophore, it can have the prop root. Because look at the condition. You see the, the, muddy, the muddy swamp area, sometimes it's muddy, sometimes it's flooding, sometimes it's you know, it's, it's not very convenient for the plant. So the plants need to modify the roots a lot. Right? Yep. Have you seen mangrove before? Yeah. Uh, what, what do you use mangrove? For what? What, what is the properties of mangrove that we use it for? Yeah. For? Major? Yes, coal. Yeah, natural coal. Coal. Arang kayu. Yeah. There is there is there is um there is a whole industry for that. What else? The building that you are standing on. The piling and everything. People put um that uh, mangrove a trunk. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Ah yeah, yeah, yeah. That word. How to spell it? Ch Ch oh. Sorry lah, my SPMBM is not that great. Cheru cho. 
the, 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 the filing thing. Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, since you are in agriculture, th there is another byproduct that can come from the uh, coal of mangrove. Okay. Especially when you want to promote organic farming. You want to promote organic farming, you cannot spray pesticide, chemical pesticide to your plants all the time. You need to use organic pest control. So one of the products of organic pest control, it's called the wood vinegar, chuka kayu. So wood vinegar comes from, as the byproduct from producing the mangrove coal. Okay, so mangrove coal, they kind of burn it in furnace without oxygen. The process is called pyrolysis. Pyrolysis. Yeah, I'll just draw for you properly. My drawing is not that great, but I can try. You know furnace? Furnace. Relau. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big oven. So you have your furnace here. And then people kind of put all the woods in here. They kind of completely seal it. So this is brick, actually. Imagine igloo, but from bricks. Yeah. So then they have the chimney going up. And then side here, they kind of make a branch chimney. So you have all the smoke coming out. And then as this thing cooling, they use the action of condensation to collect the liquid coming out. So this liquid is the wood vinegar. It's from the burning of the mangrove tree trunk. Okay. Yeah. So you can use your wood vinegar as an organic pest control. Okay. We use that. Right. Okay, modified prop rule. Okay, so you you know you know this function already. Okay, this is from the original slide. All right, can can go on. Okay, pneumatophore for the oxygen. We know that already, and also to permit um entry of the air into structure. They are covered by the periderm. Okay, this is a specialized structure um on on the surface um of the uh, pneumatophore. Okay, go on. Ha. Huh. Quiz. Tuberous root. We can agree this, tuberous root, but what kind? Remember, tuberous root is kind of general. What kind is this? What? What? Fasciculated. Why? Why fasciculated? In a bunch. Bergugus. Right. Uh. Pukul apa ni? Cassava, ubi kayu, right? See, it's this is this is the original adventitious root, okay? This is the original adventitious root, and then when the time comes, it starts to swell up. The rest of it still hasn't swelled. If it has finished swelling, it becomes like this, okay? So this is this is the progress. It becomes all of this adventitious root. Then it swells, become bigger and bigger. You get your ubi kayu. Have you eaten tapioca? All right, okay. Go on. Okay. What kind of tuberous root is this? Conical. Huh? Why, why conical? Is, is, this, is this coin shape? It's, it's, got, it's got the third leg. So you call this? You call it conical? <laughs> This this is actually um, a, a type of mutation. Actually, it shouldn't it shouldn't it shouldn't look like that. Um, um, in agriculture, there's a term for that. It's called so somanal variation. Over the time, natural mutation kind of happen. Okay, so if we manage to get seeds from this carrot, if you grow it, very likely the baby will form this kind of carrot as well yeah because the the new genes the new genomes has been embedded um, into into the seeds okay 
Daucus carota. What is the family for Daucus carota? It starts with A. What is it? But <laughs> this is the chance that you want to learn because we don't get to go to visit market or botanic garden. What? What is the family? Apia C E A E. Apia C or Apia C? Apia C. Okay? All right. Okay. Go on. All right. And the function is generally for tuberous root. It's for the food storage and the starch. This is actually the picture of starch granules, actually. I should, um, original. If it was my picture, it would look so much more beautiful. <laughs> I'm going on. <laughs> Root nodules. Yes. Um, so this is under what modification? Tap root or adventitious root? Are you sure? Tap or adventitious root? Actually, it can happen both. It's like no matter for just now. Okay, depending if it happens on the tap root, it's on the tap root. If it happens in other than that, it's a adventitious root modification. But they still produce the same structure, which is the nodule. Yeah, and then you can cut it. Actually, we um, uh, I have with my student uh, groundnuts in in the farm at the faculty. If you cut it, you can find it's pink. It's, it's dual pigment, actually. Your blood, what color? Red. Why is it black? Why is it red? Red. red? Yeah, why red blood cell is red? Hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Want to know? <laughs> you want to know interesting story? So this is a structure of hemoglobin, okay? And this structure is called porphyrin ring, porphyrin ring, and then it has got a tail, okay? So this is the hydrocarbon tail, hydro, hydrocarbon tail. So because it is hemoglobin, the middle element in this is Ferrum. Ferrum is Latin, Greek. You call iron. Ferrum. This this is not English. The English of it is iron. Iron. Yeah. That is why it appears red. Look at rust in your blood. Kind of the same, right? The color. Rust is what element? Iron. It's the same. Guess what? If you change this into... Namanya buah pengalau. <laughs> if you change this to, it becomes chlorophyll. So you and chlorophyll has so many in 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 common. That's why people become healthier when you eat green food. This is why hemoglobin and chlorophyll. The the structure, the whole structure is identical. So BG. Except the middle element. If it's magnesium, it becomes chlorophyll. And in your eyes, it looks green. If it's iron, ferrum, it appears red. Okay? So, coming again. Why this is red? There is a pigment there. Not hemoglobin. It's called lake hemoglobin. Hemoglobin. Lake hemoglobin. It's a type of uh, uh, hemoglobin. The heme. It has got the heme. The heme group. All right? All right. So, eat more chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, is it good or not for you? Where, where do you get chlorophyll? In your diet? Vegetables. Right? Yeah. So, you can get from supplements, powder, and so on. So, so many sources. Okay? So, chlorophyll 
in the old Arabic scripture, it is called the um, fluid of life. Even though they didn't know about this structure. Actually, they was, they was right. This can actually replace blood. Right? Okay. All right. Okay. Go on. Yes, and another kind of root is the mycorrhiza. So sometimes your the the roots uh, inside inside of the root, you can have uh, fungus in it inside here. So this phenomenon we call it mycorrhiza. Myco means fungus, kulat. Rhiza means root, rhizo. Fungus and roots. Two types, endo and ecto. Go on. Also, this is the picture. Um, so there is an ecto mycorrhiza. Go on. Ecto means outside. And there is an endo. So um, not a clear picture of it, but um, go on. Don't, don't before. So this is this is actually the, the hyphae, the, the root of the fungus that get into the cell. There's a two types actually. Go on, go on. Endo, this is inside, meaning that the fungus has entered inside the cells. Go on. I've, I've provided this, okay? Um, two types, ectomycorrhiza and endomycorrhiza. So endomycorrhiza is more common. If you're dealing with, you know, regular plants, you're going to see this a lot. It actually enters into the cell. Is it is it is it hurting the plant? No. It's it's um endosymbiotic. It's symbiosis symbiosis. Okay. In your gut, you've got bacteria, right? Is the bacteria killing you? No. Right. Okay. So kind of endosymbiosis. And another type is ectomycorrhiza. It's just at the surface and also in between the spaces and crevices in between the cells. Okay. And these things, there's a structure here, it's called heartic net. Only here you find this thing, heartic net. Okay. If you're not familiar with fungus, I'm just going to show you the root of the fungus. One is called hyphae. Hyphae. Maybe you can maybe maybe it's clearer in your your um your note. A collection of hyphae, a network of it we call is mycelium. Right? Okay. <clears throat> Arbu arbuscule from the word arbor. From the word arbor, arbor means tree. Why? Looks. It looks like the branch of the tree. Tree got a branching, right? Yeah, that's why. Okay. All right. Okay, go on. Let's see. Oh, hobbies. Yay. All right. Okay. Almost time. Almost time. All right. Okay. So that is all about root morphology functions and modification. Just to highlight, there is by no means that is all in nature. I think there is more. Okay. There is just always more. All right. So um, I hope um, you can properly label your drawing now. Don't call prop root, state root, state root, call prop root. So double check. And if your roots have the primary, secondary, tertiary, label that as well. All right? And we can have a look at that later during the practical. Okay? Oh, have you decided when you want to do your um, replacement class? Have you got the, the announcement that your, your semester break, mid-semester break going to change? Yes. Mm-hmm. Anybody not going to do election? No. Everybody old enough? No. Oh, not, not so old? Okay, uh, have you decided? Because we need to book the class. Thursday. Thursday, what time? Uh, I'll decide later. What, which week? Which week Thursday? Uh, what, what time? Um, is 5 to 7, okay. Uh, uh, no, no, you, 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 you need to decide and let me know. Have you, have you decided or not? Okay, what, what day, what time? 
maybe we need to do replacement maybe two or three, three maximum. Even though we kind of miss six lectures, I can cram it into into less less uh, lessons. Six, okay. You have you are going to miss six Mondays without lectures. That's a lot. Okay. So on Thursday, correct. What time? Do I up? Um, do we have anything? No, no. Okay, two thirty. Two thirty until four thirty p.m. Is it okay, everybody? Is it okay? You write that down. Okay, we'll, we'll, not Tuesday, Thursday. Thursday. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, I'll try to book uh, the the class and I'll let you know when when is it going to happen. All right. Okay. So that's all. Any question? No. All good. All right. Okay. I'll see you on on Wednesday. Okay.